Well, let's start. Uh, last time we uh, stopped uh, uh, at, at the following point. Uh, I recall um, somewhat that we have three situations uh, in which uh, we consider surface with hyperelliptic involutions. The first situation is genus G surface with one boundary component. Uh, and uh, uh, the second uh, situation is genus G surface with two boundary components. And the third situation is closed genus G surface. In each of these cases, we consider uh, the hyperelliptic involution that is a rotation by ankle pi, by a half a rotation uh, uh, about such horizontal axis. Uh, and uh, as a result, we um, um, always have two to one, two to one in general, uh, this is ramified uh, coverings. Here we have a uh, disk with uh, 2G plus 1 punctures. Uh, not punctures, but marked points, but it is uh, usually convenient to pass from punctures to marked points and so on. Uh, the, these uh, marked points correspond to, these are ramification points and they correspond to uh, fixed points of this hyperelliptic involution. Uh, in the second situation, we have disk with, we obtain disk with 2G plus two marked points. And in the third situation, we obtain a sphere. Uh, now we have no boundary components, a sphere with uh, 2G plus two um, marked points. And, uh, uh, we are proven we are, uh, we haven't we started by we haven't finished the proof of the theorem that in each of these cases we have symmetric mapping class group uh, that is uh, the subgroup of the mapping class group consisting of all mapping classes commuting with this hyperelliptic involution. Mm. And uh, in all these cases, we have uh, isomorphisms. Uh, here, it is isomorphism with uh, buried group on 2G plus one strands, which is the same as mapping class group uh, of, this, of this surface below of this uh, surface upstairs after after ramification uh, mapping class group of surface of genus zero with, with one boundary components and two g plus one punctures the same is here symmetric modular group of uh, genus g surface with two boundary components is the braid group on two g plus two strands which is mapping class group of disk with 2G plus two uh, uh, punctures or marked points. And here a result is slightly different. Uh, the matter is that here the hyperelliptic involution itself belongs to the mapping class group. In the first two cases, it doesn't belong to the mapping class group since we consider the mapping class group, group uh, uh, consisting of uh, homeomorphism uh, fixing the boundary pointwise. Here we have this. So here the result is that this symmetric mapping class group, if we take the quotient by uh, subgroup of order two generated by hyperelliptic involution, then it is uh, isomorphic to the mapping class group uh, of 
sphere with two G plus two punctures. Uh, here ju just we have this situation. It is not usual braid group since we have no boundary component. Well, oh, and I recall that we are in the following situation. First of all, we have proved, we have proved Uh, now, uh, I will concentrate on the third situation. Just all proofs follow the same line, but uh, just uh, I, I will consider the third case and uh, uh, it is um, uh, um, not hard to, to do the same in the first two cases. Uh, we have already proved that if we take symmetric homeomorphism, symmetric means those which uh, commute with hyperalgebraic convolution, uh, just as, as usual homeomorphisms, as uh, not as mapping classes, but as homeomorphisms. Uh, if we take these symmetric homeomorphisms, uh, uh, then and we consider them we consider them mm, well uh, it is not good to consider the third city uh, situation it, it is uh, it, it works as well but it is more uh, it is better to start with first one uh, it, 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 it is uh, mm, i don't want to speak or, or about this factorization each time, but uh, it is a more, a, more, a more clear picture is in the first situation. Uh, if we start uh, from symmetric homeomorphisms and we take the quotient by symmetric isotopy, then we have proved that the, this is uh, mm, that this is indeed uh, naturally isomorphic to the mapping class group of sphere, sphere with uh, of disk with two G plus one punctures, which is the braid group. Uh, th 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 this is what we have proved, or what we do not have proved. Uh, which what what we have not proved last time is uh, there are two points. First of all. We would like to understand that if a mapping class if a mapping class F uh, commutes with the hyperlytic convolution on the level of mapping classes, then uh, mm, F can be represented by a symmetric homeomorphism. And second, we would like to understand that if two uh, symmetric homeomorphisms phi and psi are isotopic, then they are symmetrically isotopic. So these are two assertions we are interested in. After we have proved them, uh, we uh, understand that, okay, in any reasonable sense, we have this, uh, um, this isomorphism. Uh, <clears throat> we, so we can consider symmetric homeomorphisms 
up to symmetric isotopy or symmetric homeomorphisms up to usual isotopy or symmetric or those homeomorphisms which are symmetric only on the level of mapping classes. Uh, actually, frankly speaking, it is not very good condition. Well, the matter is that I is, Yota is not a mapping class in our sense. So uh, mm, to understand this uh, properly, we would like, what does it mean that a mapping class commutes with Yota uh, on a level of mapping classes? Actually, uh, mm, to understand Yota as a mapping class, we should extend uh, the mapping class group. Actually, if we have a mapping class group, we may extend it so that consider the, the, this one is isotopy classes of homeomorphisms which are trivial on, uh, on the boundary component. Okay, we may extend this so that um, consider isotopy classes of homeomorphisms which are either trivial or antipodal on the boundary. And okay, then, uh, mm, th then Yota is a well-defined element of this group. Uh, this and and we may uh, say that what does it mean that a mapping class commutes? So so these two points are what we want. This is what we what we want. And uh, if we, if we prove this, then uh, the picture becomes completely clear. And also, I would like to. Recall that uh, last time uh, we proved, we have proved that if two symmetric simple code curves, uh, symmetric uh, non separating. Symmetric uh, simple closed curves are isotopic, then they are symmetrically isotopic. So, this is a technical result which we have proved last time. Well, now I would like to prove these two assertions. Uh, well, first of all, <clears throat> first of all, suppose that, so first, uh, oops, sorry. Suppose that a mapping class F commutes with uh, hyperliptic convolution. Uh, what does it actually mean? Um, let us consider um, the following set of simple closed curves. I'd like to take this one, this one, this one, such chain of simple closed curves. We have two G such simple closed curves. And finally, all, all these curves are mm, symmetric. They are mm, taken uh, by the hyperalgebraic involution to themselves. Uh, and finally, I would like to consider uh, I would like to finish, uh, to, to, to uh, choose such chain that it fills the surface, but uh, I cannot add, add uh, another simple closed curve 
but I can add simple a simple closed arc. This is a good exercise, which I don't want to do explicitly, but I hope uh, after the last lecture, you can do it yourself. That the same is proved for simple closed arcs uh, with endpoints on the boundary. Rule for simple closed arcs with endpoints on the boundary. Okay, so if I have chosen this chain of curves and arcs, uh, mm, then what follows from the fact that uh, our mapping class commutes with hyperelliptic convolution uh, as, as mapping classes on the, on the level of mapping class? It follows that, okay, mm, uh, let us represent, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry for denoting the, maybe it is better to write here like that. I would like to distinguish between the uh, hyperelliptic convolution and its mapping class. So this is, uh, these brackets means mapping class of the hyperelliptic convolution. In, in, in this extended mapping class group. Uh, okay, what does it mean? Let us um, choose any homeomorphism such that phi is in the mapping class F. My goal is to to find a symmetric homeomorphism in this mapping class. But uh, to start with, uh, let us choose just any homeomorphism in this mapping class. Then what we know, we know that phi composition with yota is isotopic to um, Yota composition with phi. Mm. Okay. Uh. Mm. And Well, first, uh, let, 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 let us understand the following. Uh, okay, let, let us uh, introduce some notation. This will be C1, C2, C3, and so on, C to G, and this arc will, will be C to G plus one. Okay. Mm. Uh, I claim that the curve uh, phi of CI is isotopic to a symmetric curve. Symmetric simple closed curve. Uh, okay, for the last one, for the C, uh, C to G plus one, of course, uh, arc instead of curve. Uh, mm, why this is true? I'm sorry, I forget some, something very easy. It is so easy that I didn't write it in my notes. Oh, yeah. mm. So mm, uh, the idea is that 
okay, we have a homeomorphism which is symmetric as mapping class on the level of mapping classes. It commutes with, uh, and hence uh, we would like to prove that up to isotopy, it takes symmetric curves to symmetric simple closed curves. Uh, oh, well, 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 yes, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I remember that it is very easy. Of course, phi of yota of ci is just phi of ci, yes? And yota, thank you very much, yota of phi of ci, uh, Okay, it is, it is yota of phi of ci, and since uh, these two homeomorphisms are isotopic, then this curve is isotopic to that curve. And uh, this is, uh... ah, well, the only thing, uh, the only thing which we would like to know that, look, uh, act actually, actually this claim is reduced to the following one that if gamma is isotopic to iota of gamma, then gamma is symmetric. It is easy, but it is not obvious. Uh, look, uh, mm, in fact, uh, uh, a priori, it could be the following situation that, okay, if we take gamma, and we take uh, yota of gamma, then they are isotopic. But why there is a, a representative of gamma, which is just um, uh, uh, symmetric or, uh, as a set? Uh, it, is, it may be not so obvious, but uh, it actually it follows immediately from the following observation that of course uh, on this, uh, Mm. If we look on this surface, then of course it uh, has a hyperbolic metric, a symmetric hyperbolic metric. It has such hyperbolic metric, which is uh, uh, which is uh, invariant under uh, yota. Uh, there are two possibilities to construct such metric. First of all, we can uh, just remember how we have constructed hyperbolic metrics uh, on the surface. We took certain, uh, we started with, from certain uh, pans decomposition and then uh, uh, prescribe uh, some Fenkel Nielsen coordinates and uh, 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 glue. Uh, the hyperbolic metrics uh, from um, uh, hyperbolic metrics, metrics on pair of, pairs of pants. Uh, of course, in this situation, we can uh, consider hyperbolic metric. Uh, um, we can consider invariant uh, pants decomposition, for instance, like that. Okay, and uh, to, together with uh, green and violet uh, curves uh, all together, and uh, uh, prescribe, uh, for instance, equal lengths so that to obtain invariant metrics. So it is not uh, not a problem to uh, introduce symmetric uh, uh, hyperbolic metrics. And if we have done this, then. Uh, then uh, just geodesic representative uh, is symmetric. Since it's, since it's unique. If, if we have a curve such that it is isotopic to, uh, uh, oh, so, so, so sorry, I, um, I, say one thing and write another thing, I'm sorry. I would like to say that if gamma is isotopic to yota of gamma, 
then gamma is isotopic to a symmetric curve. No, 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 not itself. Uh, uh, and this is because gamma is isotopic to a uh, geodesic representative, which is then uh, necessarily symmetric. Okay. So what, what is next? Next, okay, look, this chain of curves of simple closed curves goes to some other chain of simple closed curves. Uh, okay, I just would like to draw some example. For instance, um, okay, we may something like that. that further, uh, this is C1 prime, uh, which is the image of um, uh, then say such curve, then this is C2 prime, this is C3 prime, then say something like that. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, I just would like to, uh, and so on. We may consider images of these curves. And since any of them is isotopic, uh, yes, since any of them is isotopic to a symmetric simple closed curve, then up to isotopy of phi, uh, well, performing the isotopy of phi, may, maybe it is better to say replacing phi by uh, an isotopic homeomorphism, uh, we may achieve that phi of ci are indeed uh, symmetric. And then, then, actually it is not hard to extend, uh, look, I, I would like to construct, um, I have one chain of symmetric curves, this one, and I have another chain of some of their images. Now I would like to construct uh, a homeomorphism which takes these curves to that curves, uh, uh, respect and orientations and uh, uh, I would like this homeomorphism to be symmetric. So I would like to construct just asymmetric homeomorphism, uh, which takes these curves to that curves. It is not hard. Namely, we start with C1. It contains two, uh, Mm, two uh, fixed points and it has certain orientations. After phi, uh, we obtain C1 prime with again with certain orientations and again with two fixed points. Of course, we can take uh, first fixed point is those which is not on C2 prime and the second which uh, so uh, they are uh, you, six points may be canonically numbered here and here accordingly. And we may extend our homeomorphism to uh, subsequently to all, consequently to all uh, arcs of these simple closed curves. So respect and orientations and so on. And then we, the complement here is two disks. And here we again have complement consisting of two disks. And then we can, these disks are symmetric to each other. And uh, we can, uh, after we define this psi on the curves, we can extend it to one of, the, of these two disks and then extend to the other by symmetry. By symmetry. So what we get, I, I, I just would like to say that 
there is a symmetric homeomorphism which takes this chain to that chain. And finally, finally, these are some artificial symmetric homeomorphism, but then we see that psi is isotopic to initial homeomorphism phi. Why? Uh, this is just Alexander's method. It takes all these curves to themselves. Uh, no, no, it takes all these, phi takes all these curves to these curves. Psi again takes all these curves to that curve, to the same curves. Hence, psi, say psi inverse composition with phi uh, takes all these curves to themselves, respecting orientations, and hence it is trivial as mapping class. Hence, it is as a topic to a trivial one. So, look, we started with homeomorphism phi which is symmetric only on the level of mapping classes. Then we studied how these homeomorphisms act on that uh, chain of curves and arc. And we constructed new homeomorphism, which is symmetric by the very definition and which is isotopic to phi. So, so we obtain the proof of this first assertion that any mapping class which is symmetric on the level of mapping classes, which is com which commutes with uh, this uh, involution on the level of mapping classes, it can be actually represented by a symmetric homeomorphism. Now let us prove the, say, the second assertion. So now we assume that second, phi and psi are symmetric homeomorphisms uh, such that phi is isotopic to psi. And we would like to prove that phi is symmetrically isotopic to psi. We again take the same picture, the, the, the same chain of curves. Uh, uh, look, uh, uh, yes, uh, first of all, we may always come from pair phi psi, we may always come to pair psi inverse phi and one and an identity, this identity homeomorphism. Uh, just applying psi inverse, since psi is symmetric, uh, this psi inverse also is symmetric and it will take symmetric isotopy to symmetric isotopy. Hence, uh, so, uh, uh, the, uh, the consequence is that uh, it is sufficient to prove this uh, for psi, we may, uh, uh, we may assume that one of the homeomorphisms is just identical. So the situation is as follows. Uh, we do not want to think about two homeomorphisms. We just have one symmetric homeomorphism. Uh, which is uh, isotopic to the identity. And we would like to prove that it is symmetrically isotopic to the identity. Okay, look. Since phi is isotopic to the identity, uh, since phi is symmetric, we see that phi of ci um, are also symmetrics, symmetric simple closed ghost. Uh, 
but now uh, since uh, they are symmetric, uh, yes, they, they are symmetric and phi is isotopic to the identity. Hence, yes, and they are symmetric and they are of course non separate since uh, CIs are not separated. They are symmetric since phi is isotopic, not symmetric, isotopic, we do not know it at, at the moment, but it is isotopic to the identity. Hence, phi of CI is isotopic to CI. Hence, by Lemma proved uh, last time, uh, proved on the previous lecture, phi of CI is symmetrically isotopic to CI. And now, now, uh, now uh, we apply, uh, yes, what does it mean that it is symmetrically isotopic to, C, to CI? Uh, let us go downstairs. Uh, let us go downstairs. Downstairs we have disk with two G plus one punctures. And these CIs are just, let us take the same color. They go to arcs between these punctures and the last arc goes to the boundary. Uh, these are, uh, let they be, uh, denote them by the same letters with bars. C1 bar, C2 bar and C3 bar and so on. Since phi of CI is symmetrically isotopic to CI. Okay, phi is symmetric isomorphism, a homeomorphism. Hence, it induces a homeomorphism downstairs. Homeomorphism uh, uh, of this G plus two G plus one puncture disk modular its boundary. Uh, 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 trivial on the boundary. And symmetric isotopy, uh, since phi of phi of CI is symmetrically isotopic to CI, we see that phi bar of CI bar is isotopic to CI bar. Just uh, symmetric isotopy uh, obviously goes downstairs. Hence, hence we may apply Alexander's method to this phi of CI. Look, the uh, phi bar. Look, these arcs, these arcs, they fill the surface uh, downstairs. The complement is just a disk. So uh, if uh, uh, the, the, we, these, okay, okay, if we have these, Phi bars of CI bars. Uh, it, it is difficult to draw them in. Uh, the picture is trivial since they are actually uh, isotopic to CI bars. And hence, uh, uh, um, Alexander's method says uh, these arcs are pairwise non intersecting uh, except for the endpoints and hence Alexander's method says us uh, that uh, uh, phi bar is isotopic to a homeomorphism uh, that fixes all CIs 
point wise. Since they, uh, the, since uh, any of these curves is taken, any of these arcs is taken to an isotopic arcs, uh, and they satisfy Alexander's condition, no triple intersections, then uh, uh, there exists a homeomorphism which uh, fixes uh, in the same isotopic class, which fixes these CIs pointwise. And the now the claim. Um, Okay, uh, yes, and then we have uh, disk uh, in the complement and hence any such homeomorphism uh, that fixes all CI bars point-wise, it is necessarily isotopic to the identity homeomorphism. So we arrive to conclusion that phi, phi bar is isotopic to the identity downstairs, this identity on these two punctured, two plus G, two G plus one punctured disk. Oh, sorry, to the identity on G, two, two G plus one punctured disk. Uh, okay, and finally, we may, this isotopy, Uh, can be lifted to a symmetric isotopy upstairs. Uh, okay, isotopy is just uh, any isotopy uh, is uh, just movement along some vector field which changes uh, during the time. Uh, we have already discussed this. If we have isotopy downstairs, then it is it can be uniquely uh, uh, lifted to an symmetric isotopy upstairs. Just uh, any point here moves in some way, and here we uh, both its preimages move uh, accordingly, so that they project to the to that point uh, through the whole movement. Okay, so we we can fix uh, only the beginning on the the isotopy or the, the end of the isotopy. So I believe that we we use if we, for example start. Uh, from phi, then we use something that, uh, like, uh, if uh, we have something uh, which is uh, trivial uh, after the projection, then it is one or something like that. No, 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 no. We downstairs we have found uh, uh, the, the an isotopy between phi bar and identity. Yes, and we, we, we lift it starting from phi, and we get something that projects into phi into one bar, uh, and and the, 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 uh, we we need to understand that it's one. Сейчас, да, да, давайте секундочку. У нас сверху был гомеоморфизм фи. Да. Мы его вниз спустили. Да. да. Он был симметричный, мы его спустили. И поняли, что внизу он изотопен. Изотопен единички. Но дальше? Все, дальше поднимаем эту изотопию. Да, мы поднимаем ее до чего? Мы поднимаем, поднимаем ее, начиная с фи, правильно? А, ah, well, well, чем она закончится, да? Да, она закончится чем, что произойдет в единичку, осталось понять, что это сильная единичка. Yes, 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 thank you very much. Yes, the, uh, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, indeed, here we have isotopy between phi bar, isotopy between phi bar and trivial. Yes, upstairs, 
this isotopy lifts to an isotopy starting from phi and finishing with something. And we are now, we need to understand what is this something. But this something is a symmetric homeomorphism, which goes to the identity downstairs. Uh, since the homeomorphism is trivial on the boundary, this is just the identity. It could be, there are only two homeomorphisms that goes to, to the identity downstairs. The, the identity and Yota. But Yota is not allowed in this situation, so we have only the identity. This is exactly the, the point where we get uh, this difference. In, for, for a closed surface, we could not achieve that this, uh, for a closed surface, this something is not necessarily identity. It may be or either identity or uh, hyperelliptic involution itself. But in our case, we have a homeomorphism which goes to trivial one downstairs. Hence, it takes any point, any pair of symmetric points to the same pair of points. The only difference is that it may either swap these point, points or not swap these points. Uh, since uh, by continuity, it either swaps these points for, for all such pairs or doesn't swap it for all such pairs. So it is either identity or hyperelliptic involution itself. But since uh, if we have at least one boundary component, then hyperelliptic involution is not allowed. Okay. Well, so we arrived to we arrived to this, uh, we finally proved this uh, uh, nice theorem, Birman Hilden theorem. Well, well where, where is uh, formulation? Uh, this Birman Hilden theorem that we have these isomorphisms. And uh, this theorem is very useful. This is actually an untrivial, a rather non trivial. Uh, mm, uh, relationship uh, between uh, mapping class groups and braid groups. And uh, first of all, now let us look, um, the, the next natural step is to look on certain simplest elements of these symmetric mapping class group and to understand which braids correspond to them, which well, which natural elements do we have in mapping in symmetric mapping class groups? Okay, uh, we may take. Uh, I would like to consider three types of elements. First of all, we may choose a symmetric. Um, okay, symmetric, so, so, something like that. A symmetric, curve, simple closed curve on uh, on the mapping class group. Uh, just note that there are many symmetric, for instance, this one is also symmetric, simple closed curve. So, so uh, just, uh, it, is, it is not true that we have only the, those uh, simple uh, chain. We, but uh, it is easier to draw one of these curves. Okay, we have a symmetric simple cost curve and we have a dent twist about this curve. And a natural question is, uh, what is the corresponding element of braid group? Uh, just a, uh, I would like to make my surface shorter to, to be able to draw something on the, on the right. Mm. So it is a natural question. 
what 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 do we see here uh the same may be asked for in two other interesting question uh, situations one situation is that we have a symmetric separator simple closed curve and again we may ask what does it correspond so here we have elements of symmetric mapping class group and here we we are we must have some elements of braid group which is mapping class group of disk with 2g plus one punctures uh, uh, today for me uh, this uh, this language of disk with uh, of mapping class group of disk with punctures will be more convenient than braids uh, the same and the third interesting situation is um, this is the second one and the third one we may consider a pair of simple closed curves which are uh, none of uh, them is symmetric but they are disjoint and then they are symmetric to each other so we may consider a picture like that and then we have uh, these then twists are not element of symmetric mapping class group, but if we take the product t gamma t gamma prime, then it is a symmetric homeomorphism, and we again may wonder what is the corresponding braid here. Okay, uh, just look. Mm. Uh, first of all, we may look on what is the image of gamma downstairs in all these three situations. In this situation, we have marked points and among all marked points, we have two which correspond to this we have proved last time that any symmetric uh, non separating simple closed curves passes through exactly one exactly two fixed points of the hyperelliptic involution so it projects downstairs to a to an arc between connecting these two uh, marked points corresponding to the corresponding uh, corresponding to th that two fixed points. Okay, and um, what does this t gamma goes to? Okay, here here we have an element which is called semi half twist half then half twist look in general in general uh, we may consider such curve which goes around gamma bar some small uh, curve enclosing gamma bar uh, let it be well delta uh, we may consider half twist uh, let, it, let it be h h delta uh, half twist uh, about delta what does it mean when we uh, define then twist we proceed as follows we cut the surface uh, along the curve then we rotate um, one of the we cut along a curve then we rotate one side of this cut by 2 pi 
and then we glue them again. Uh, okay, if we um, rotate by not to pi, but uh, by some um, uh, smaller angle, then um, we would not have a well-defined uh, homeomorphism. But in this situation, uh, we can do it. Uh, let, let, let us be more precise here. Mm. So suppose that we have two punctures, punctures, two punctures uh, connected by this gamma bar. Uh, we have all, also some punctures outside. And then the, what is a half twist about this delta? Uh, Actually, delta is not needed. It is better to, um, it is maybe uh, be better to just to, to, to draw uh, to draw this gamma bar itself. Um, we may cut, just cut along delta, along gamma bar, oh, sorry, cut along gamma bar. Uh, what do we see after we cut along gamma bar? We have here pi, and we have these two sides of the cut. This this is after we cut along gamma bar. Then, uh, okay, uh, assume that uh, this this surface is made of some material which allows to rotate it uh, of some elastic material. Uh, then we start uh, to rotate uh, this region so that red curve is fixed. And we start to rotate, uh, or say in clockwise direction uh, here, so that uh, and we make half rotation. After this half rotation, Pi and Pj are swapped. And then we glue the cut uh, back. So the, um, the picture is like that. If we have some test curves that one well, this test curve goes to pi and that goes to pj. Then after this half twist, they uh, behave as follows. These pj and pi have swapped and this one goes left and now goes to pj. And this one goes left and now goes to pi. So this half twist, uh, is um, it is trivial outside of such neighborhood. And in this neighborhood, we have this half rotation. Uh, it is not an element of pure mapping class group. It swaps the punctures, but is, it is an element of this uh, of usual mapping class group. I just would like to uh, just warn in that uh, it, is, uh, it is only in these particular situation when the half twist is well defined. There is no good definition of a half twist of uh, any simple closed curve, only in this situation when simple, simple close, closed curves encloses exactly two punctures and nothing else. Okay, and now look, I, I uh, my claim is that this T gamma goes to this half twist here. Does T gamma switch uh, fixed points I and J? Uh, no. Uh, well, well uh, sorry. Ah, does the gamma? Ну, то есть гамма вроде не меняет и G, а при этом его образ переставляет прокола. 
Сейчас разберемся. Ой. Let us look on a, te on a test curve. Let us uh, look on this situation. Okay. Oh, so, so sorry. Mm. We have here some. We have here this gamma. And uh, we had some test curve, which says, say, passes through. Uh, after, uh, if we apply T gamma here, then this test curve will go to the following curve. It goes, then it comes once around and it goes further. Well, mm, uh, look, when we are on the disk, uh, then uh, the idea is as follows. When we perform the Sorry, uh, let us consider a small neighborhood of this gamma. A small neighborhood of gamma. We have such cylinder. This cylinder around gamma. When, uh, when we define a end twist, we make the following uh, uh, actions. We cut along this T gamma and then rotate one of the sides um, by the whole rotation. Yes? Uh, this is not uh, uh, a good picture now. The matter is that, okay, if we take this, uh, oh, so sorry, I, I, I'd like to consider the situation after we cut. After we cut, okay. We have two copies of gamma here. And to define the gamma, we need to rotate one of the um, one of the uh, uh, sides, say say the upper side by uh, two pi. Yes. We may rotate either this by two pi or this side by two pi in the opposite direction. Yes, uh, either this or that. Yes, but both ways are not good. The matter is that both of them give homeomorphisms which are not symmetric. They are symmetric on the level of mapping classes, but uh, to understand what is happening, it is more convenient to obtain the homeomorphism which is symmetric just without any isotope. It is not hard to do this. We need to rotate here by pi and here by pi. This is the same mapping class, but now it is represented and, and then glue, glue back, then glue back.
now th this is truly symmetric homeomorphism and look this homeomorphism swaps these two points okay 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 it, uh, after rotation by pi actually uh, the answer to a question is as follows if we speak about mapping classes then we can't at all say something like mapping class stabilizes a point. It is uh, nonsense. Uh, mapping class is not a homeomorphism. It cannot stabilize or swap points. If we try to speak on the level of homeomorphisms, then, okay, we may, uh, in the mapping class T gamma, we may choose a mapping, a, a homeomorphism, which preserves points pi and pg or we may choose a homeomorphism which swaps these two points but in case we would like to to choose a symmetric homeomorphism we need to swap these points not to preserve them and so uh, when we go downstairs when we go to the disk we see only, okay, uh, just look on this symmetric homeomorphism. We see just half of this, uh, uh, we may forget about one half and we have only one rotation by pi. So this is why we get exactly this half twist. Okay, I have answered your question. Yes? Yeah, yes. Uh, well, uh, but okay, so, but now what are half twist on the level of braids? So if we have this half twist, which acts on test curves like that, then actually it is not hard to see that um, on the level of braids, it is just Uh, just usual braid like that, which exchanges uh, these two punctures. Uh, oh, oh, okay, if we, uh, uh, how the braid is produced, if we look on this mapping class, forget about punctures and take isotopy that changes to uh, th this uh, mapping class to, to, to the trivial, this homeomorphism to the trivial homeomorphism. Then, uh, then this braid is exactly what we see. Uh, and okay, we have exactly this usual swap of two, <clears throat> of two punctures. And this is another, we actually, if we look on this, we understand that we get another proof of the following fact. Uh, we have already proved that if the geometric intersection number of two simple of two simple closed curves is one, then we have braid relation. It is not surprising. The matter is that okay. Uh, mm, uh, all pairs of simple closed curves with uh, geometric intersection index one looks uh, they they are low uh, they uh, they are locally the same. So uh, up to a homomorphism, all such pairs look similarly. So we may consider just this particular point of red and blue curves. They are both symmetric, and after uh, after uh, uh, in braids they correspond to to this uh, to such braids oh, sigma one and sigma two, and it is a standard fact which is just. Uh, well, the third Rademeister move that 
these sigma one and sigma two they satisfy uh, they satisfy such a relation uh, sigma one sigma two sigma one equals sigma two sigma one sigma two so it is uh, we have already proved that the, the, that this is true but now we uh, uh, we obtain another point of view on this fact that actually uh, it is not surprising that braid relations appear here since it is just exactly the usual braid relations also okay but now okay now let us oh sorry let us look on these on these two situations where we have either mm, separating uh, twist about separating uh, simple closed curve uh, mm, symmetric simple closed curve or product of two twists about non-symmetric non uh, uh, non-separating simple closed curves that are symmetric to each other look in this situation this gamma goes to some here we have some punctures and this gamma goes to some closed curve downstairs okay uh, look and this gamma is um, goes twice if we restrict our projection to gamma then gamma goes twice around uh, gamma bar what does it mean if we take a test curve here which approaches gamma and after a net twist it goes once it goes left and it goes once along the gamma if we go downstairs and look on the same you know, on the image of this test curve then it goes left but now it goes twice around the gamma bar since gamma goes twice around the gamma bar under the projection so the conclusion is the following that this t gamma corresponds corresponds to the square of T gamma bar downstairs. And <clears throat> the third situation is that we have these two uh, situation like that. We have two uh, simple closed curves that are symmetric to each other. And we consider uh, this product of uh, then twists then gamma and gamma prime goes to the same gamma bar gamma goes to gamma bar and gamma prime goes to gamma bar and and uh, he, uh well uh, I would like to ask you, how do you think, uh, what does this go to? So if we take the gamma, the gamma prime, what is the Dent result? Twist. Dent twist or the square of dent twist? Without square. Without, yes, the, the, the correct answer is dent twist without square. The matter is that uh, if we would like, uh, actually, uh, I was not, uh, the, uh, it, uh, it was not very good here to start with test curve upstairs. It is uh, better to start with then uh, the opposite direct, to think the opposite direction. Let us start with a test curve here downstairs then it goes to some 
test curve here. And if we look uh, on what happens after the twist, if we apply this then twist, then, well, here we also have this then twist only once. Okay, good exercise just to, to, to go through this uh, um, um, through this argument in more details just uh, I, I was not very uh, very careful about details here which is a good exercise to understand that we indeed have these three cases so uh, a then twist uh, about uh, uh, symmetric non separation simple closed curve goes to half twist, a then twist about separating symmetric simple closed curve goes to the square of then twist downstairs, and the product of two then twists about symmetric simple closed curve, uh, better about symmetric which other simple closed curves goes just to usual then twists downstairs. Okay. Mm. Maybe it's, mm, maybe it's uh, a reasonable point to make a break now. Uh, and we resume in 10 minutes.
Okay, let's continue. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Well, so uh, well uh, now the the actually these results about symmetric mapping class groups uh, may be applied to obtaining um, some relations. Uh, we have already discussed them. I have claimed that there are such uh, relations in mapping class group, but uh, we haven't proved this. Uh, let us consider the following situation. Suppose that we, two, two, two situations, either we have surface of genus G with one boundary component, and we contain a uh, consider a chain, the this standard chain of two um, G simple closed curves C one, C two, etc. to G to G. Uh, and the other situation is when we have two boundary components. Now we have chain of odd number of simple closed curves uh, from C1 to C to G plus one. Uh, okay. Uh, all these, if we are interested in this, and here we have this boundary component D and here we have two boundary components D and T prime. If uh, we look on then twists about all uh, specified curves about CIs and about D and about D prime, then these then twists are symmetric mapping classes, uh, except for D and D prime uh, in the lower situation, by, but then the product is symmetric mapping class. So, we can obtain relations between them from relations between corresponding braids. Okay, but and, uh, here we have fixed points, which goes to um, marked points on the disk. And so they go to strands of braids. They correspond to initial points of strands of braids. And these C1, C, okay, C to G and C to G plus one in the lower situation also, they correspond in the braid group, they correspond to usual generators. C1, sigma one, sigma, to G and uh, okay, here we have braid group on TG, 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 sorry, 2G plus two strands. And here we have braid group on 2G plus one strands. And uh, so, 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 so this is exactly the number of standard generators. The, 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 this sigma i is, uh, sigma i is this standard generator. I don't want to think about uh, should we put here this type of uh, intersection or another type. It, it de depends on whether we look braid from whether the time goes from below to above or vice versa. It doesn't matter. It is only important that all these uh, uh, intersections are of the same type for me. So this is sigma i, where we have i and i plus first strands. Uh, okay, and now, now, uh, and this d, this d in the first case, uh, actually in both cases, the corresponding 
the bar is just a self. Uh, uh, in this in this case, we look on um, on the image of this separated simple closed curve D, and in the case in the lower case we look on the images of d and d prime and in both cases okay we can consider the boundary of the disk or any curve as a topic to it this is exactly the so in the first case td comes to td bar squared and in the lower case td td bar uh, td prime goes to uh, uh, to the to the, um, uh, the dentist about the d, d bar yes and what is this on the um, level of uh, oh, oh the what does this then twist about the boundary means on the um, level of braid actually this is a um, full rotation so uh, we just uh, take uh, all all, uh, all these curves and um, rotate once uh, 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 full rotation, and th this is generator of the center of uh, braid group. So um, we rotate all, all uh, strands simultaneously. Look how the full rotation can be written from sigma i's. Well, uh, look on the following braid. We take the first curve uh, and it goes here. This braid is just sigma one, sigma two, etc. Sigma. Mm. Okay. To mm, in uh, uh, I uh, let us start with the first case where we have. Uh, odd numbers of strands, then it is sigma one, etc. Sigma two g. This is not a full rotation, but this is a root of full rotation. If we apply, if we uh, take the power, th th this is uh, the power two g plus one. Then we get a full rotation. So. This is just TD bar. Okay. And now we may square this relation sigma one, sigma two, sigma two G to the power four G plus two is. Um, td bar squared and now both sides of this relation this is a relation just in braid group on 2g plus one strands sorry you wrote sigma two sigma two it's supposed yes, to be sigma one sigma, sigma one, one yeah. sigma, sigma one sigma two <laughs> yeah okay sorry uh yes and uh so this uh, this uh, relation in braid group corresponds to a relation in symmetric mapping class group of this of this surface, but it is a subgroup of usual mapping class group. So it corresponds to a relation in usual mapping class group of this surface, and this relation, okay, uh, in in this mapping class group, sigma i's correspond to. C i's and square of dent twist about d bar corresponds to dent twist about d. So we arrive to the following relation. 
then twist about ci, c1, c2, and so on. Then twist about c, sorry, 2g to the power 4g plus 2 equals 2. Then twist about the boundary curve. Oh, well, when we speak about the end twist about the boundary, we always mean the end twist about a curve isotopic to the boundary. Okay, this is the first chain relation. Similarly, okay, if we do the same in the case uh, below, when we have uh, the surface with two boundary components, okay, Instead of this one, we similarly get, now we have odd numbers of generators, and now we have group to B to G plus two, and now to uh, obtain uh, the full rotation, we need to take it to, to the power to G plus two. This is TD bar and this is full rotation. Now we do not need to take the square of this since TD bar is exactly what corresponds to this product. So what we get is that uh, the product of these twists about curve in this chain to the power 2g plus 2 equals the product of then twists about the boundary components. So these are chain relations. But now, now there is another version of chain relations since there is another way to write down a full rotation. Look, consider the following braid. So these are also useful, but now we would like to obtain a, another form, which is also useful. Uh, let us consider the following braid. C1, sigma 1 squared, sigma 2, sigma 3, etc., sigma 2g. Let us... Uh, let us write uh, uh, sigma one, then again sigma one, and then and then sigma three. This goes on, uh, above all other strands. Okay we get a, a braid like that. Look, let us, uh, okay, we can uh, numerate this from one to two G. Uh, and now I would like, uh, actually the braid group is independent on which particular two G points are taken uh, as the endpoints of the strands, we may take usual. Uh, we may take them on one line as usual, but we may rearrange them in some other uh, in some other um, uh, way. And okay, if you look on this picture properly, you may see that all strands rotate around this one. So if we, mm, we may move these points so that to obtain the following picture, the strand one is in the between, in the middle and other strands go around it. So we have uh, in which direction, mm, Two, three, four, five, 
and so on to G. And uh, if the strands are arranged in this, um, I just move this first strand here in the uh, in the middle, and all others are arranged around it. And if we write down this. Um, <clears throat> and if the, we write sigma to g, then we have probably to g plus one strand. Sorry? Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Of course, of course, we have here g plus one to, 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 to g. The, 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 this is in um, b to g plus one. Yes, yes. And here we have to g plus one, and here we have to g plus one. And the braid is just. Um, Okay, look, two goes to 2g plus one, three goes to two, four goes to three, and so on. And one is in the middle and it goes straight. And all others rotate around this one, uh, the first strand. Uh, so what I want to say, I want to say that if we take this element, to the power, uh, okay, we have two G plus one strands, but one of them is taken uh, to the center. And so we have, uh, we, we need to take the power to G. I would like to say that it is full rotation. Okay. Uh, it is my favorite way to see, the, to see it as here, but okay, it, it can be uh, just checked. Um, algebraically or however you want. So it is just some easy uh, identity in break group that if, if we take this element, then it is a full rotation. But actually the geometric sense is that all, uh, all strands rotate about around the first one. Okay, and Again, since it's full rotation, it is TV bar. Now we again have, uh, okay, of course, uh, yes. And now uh, uh, we again need to take the square of this relation and we get that uh, if we take this element, uh, the first is squared, the, all others are not squared and take it to the power to G, then we get again the, uh, the twist about the boundary component. Look, it is interesting that this twist about the boundary component, we may write it either as for G plus second power of some element or as for G's power of some of another element. And so surprisingly, both situations are possible. And again, as if we take uh, an odd chain, then uh, here, instead of power to G, will be power to G plus one. We have no need to square it and it is TD, TD bar or TD prime uh, in, in, in this situation, in this situation. Uh, okay, so we have two types of such chain relations, these two and those two. Uh, uh, all of them are rather useful in um, understanding some properties of mapping class groups. Uh, um, what I want to, yes, and I want to say now, okay, these relations are in the mapping class groups of, of this surface or of that surface, but if we have any chain, say, okay, we may have uh, 
we may have such, for instance, uh, uh, surface, say, of genus four, and we may consider, say, look, this simple closed curve. Then I take that simple closed curve. Uh, then I take those simple closed curve. This is just, just an example. And finally, this one. A, these, they form a chain, C1, C2, C3, C4. This is another chain, yes? Uh, but all uh, consecutive uh, curves have intersection index one and non-consecutive do not add is joint. Uh, if we have situation like that, then we may take regular, small regular neighborhood of this union. And if we have even chain, if we, have, if we start with even chain, so chain consisting of, of 2K, let, let it be 2K. Two, two, two uh, curves, then uh, it is easy to see that the, let N be this na regular neighborhood, then the boundary of this regular neighborhood is, um, okay, what is the boundary? In the, uh, in the even case, um, this regular neighborhood looks like this surface. Its boundary is, a one curve, one curve, simple closed curve, and uh, uh, and we obtain the corresponding relation, since uh, this relation holds in this n, n is homeomorphic in the in this situation, n is homeomorphic uh, to surface of genus. K uh, with one boundary component. Uh, sorry, boundary component is written here. And we get uh, uh, this relation and this relation. If we start with odd chain, so of chain of consistent of two G plus one curves, then the boundary of the corresponding regular neighborhood will be union of two simple closed curves and will be homeomorphic to, uh, to the genus K surface with two boundary components and we get these relation and that relation. So there are plenty of such relations corresponding to all possible chains in mapping class groups. Сейчас, мне кажется, что там чего-то не так, может быть, я не, я не права с, с отношениями. Можно чуть-чуть по наверх отмотаться. Вот да, там давайте. написано, там степень 2G плюс 1 и 4G, а, а там сколько этих э, цепочечек-то? У нас же, когда, ну, когда встречается 2G, то у нас 2G плюс одна ниточка. Поэтому да. мы, наверное, должны провернуться, чтобы получить полный оборот, мы должны повторить его сколько раз? 2G, 2G плюс одну раз. Нет, плюс... мы, мы вертим их. А, да-да-да, ладно, значит, в этом, в этом случае понятно. Да-да-да, а, а в этом было 2G плюс один, правильно? А, все, да, да, да. да. Нет, вот именно, именно, именно в этом разница. Когда мы вертим их просто вот все, то да, 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 да. плюс один. А когда мы вертим вокруг одной, то два же. Окей. Actually, there is a very nice consequence of this particular relation. I just would like to copy it. Uh, a nice consequence is like that. Let us consider. Uh, let us consider a closed surface of genus G. Okay. 
and consider the following. So this is closed surface of genus G. Consider the following chain. One, two, three, four, etc. Up to two G. Я чего я не очень поняла вот это следствие. Ну в общем в смысле. Какое у нас еще раз условие на цепочку? Цепочка. Каждый попарно пересекается. Пересекается ровно в одной точке. Точка. Да. Сейчас. А, а почему тогда это, если это очевидно, что у него граница какая надо? Ну, что, там, что можно взять окрестность, у которой граница, там одна окружность. Да, э, да. Смотр, смотрите, надо просто эту регулярную... Тут весь, воп, весь вопрос в том, вот мы можем взять и начать обходить эту, эту вот весь конгломерат, да? И начать обходить, и весь вопрос в том, э, начав обходить это дело, да, мы можем получить одну или две окружности. Ну, мы попадем на ту сторону или не на ту, вернувшись обратно. Угу. Вот. Ну и, и, в общем, тут вот тут комбинаторика одна и та же. Независимо от того, какую, э, э, как это называется, какую цепочку мы рассматриваем. На самом деле, мы любую цепочку можем отобразить в стандартную. А, потому что это, в смысле, на самом деле просто склеивание этих колец. Да, это склеивание колец. Все цепочки выглядят одинаково. Угу, все да, все да. цепочки из данного количества выглядят одинаково. Но просто так, как их вкладывать угу. можно многими разными способами, мы получаем, на самом деле, очень много соотношений. Угу, ну, таким образом. Вот. Но они все, все, по сути. Вот, так вот, let us consider the following chain consisting of 2G. We, we could add 2G. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, I would like, I'm sorry. We could add this 2G, uh, 2G's uh, curve, but I don't want to do it. I would like to consider the chain consisting of 2G minus one curves. I, I would like to stop here. Okay? I consider 2G plus minus one curves. If we look on these 2G minus one curves, then the regular neighborhood will have boundary. This is the boundary of regular neighborhood. Oh, up, up to isotopy, of course, we, we could draw these uh, green curves very close to C1, C, uh, C2G minus one, but by, by the, up to isotopy, these are these two curves, T and T prime. So we may, for a moment, forget about this cap, yes, and uh, think just of genus G minus one curve, with two boundary components. But now I would like to add this cylinder, this cylinder on the right. After I add this cylinder, uh, D becomes isotopic to D bar, to the, uh, to the, oh, sorry, isotopic. Isotopic to D prime. It wasn't isotopic to it in the uh, uh, before we add this cylinder on the right. Okay, and I would like to write down this this particular no no, no not this. I would like to write down this relation. Well, I copy it, uh, but in this relation. Uh, uh, I need to do the following. Uh, I need to replace everywhere G by G minus one. So now my surface with two boundary components has genus not G by G minus one. So I need to put to G minus one here. Okay. So this is the relation we have proved, but now D and D prime are isotopic to each other. So this is just the square of the 
uh, of the den twist about D. Okay, now let us take the power, let us uh, take the power of order one minus G of both sides. So I would like to obtain the following. Oh, sorry, it's here, C. C to G minus one, I get this one. And here I get, okay, this is just a tautological, well, well okay, I, I take such power of both sides. Uh, nothing interesting. But now, now, okay, I can re rewrite this as uh, I uh, here I have power uh, to two minus two G, I may take T D to the power two G minus one here, and I have T D here. Well, and now, now note that this then twist about curve D of course commutes with all then twists about uh, curves C1 and so on C two G minus one since the curves are uh, disjoint. Hence, D, D doesn't intersect all other curves. Hence, I may rewrite the left-hand side in the following way. I may write the power of one minus G multiplied by TD and then Take uh, the, this square bracket is just just uh, usual brackets. Uh, just I would like to. Uh, well, what we get, we see a very nice consequence. That the then twist. about any simple closed curve on surface of genus G is the, has a root of order to G minus one. Okay, look, TD is a non-separating, uh, any non-separating, I'm sorry, non-separating. D is the non-separating simple closed curves, but all non-separating simple closed curves are taken to each other by homeomorphisms. So D is just any simple closed curve. For any simple closed curve D, we can find such a chain of curves. And we can do this uh, easy mm, mm, computation, and we get that TD is the 2G minus first power of something. Uh, well, in fact, this is rather mm, uh, from the first point of view, it is a rather confusing situation. Uh, we, soon we, we will prove, and it is a well-known result, that the mapping class group is generated by then twists about sim non-separating simple closed curves. And it turns out that, okay, the group is generated by uh, these then twists about non-separating simple closed curves, but uh, any, of these generators is in fact uh, the 
2g minus first power of some words of some word so there is such strange property of this group okay uh well so now let us finish this topic concerning uh, symmetric uh, mapping class group and chain relations and uh, maybe in the rest of today's uh, lecture uh, i would like to uh, start uh, another uh, topic namely mm, uh, actually actually this is a, a, a very important uh, thing uh, there is a there are many methods for studying mapping class groups but one of the most important is that we would like to study a mapping class group or some group uh, close to mapping class group or some subgroups of mapping class group something related to it uh, we may start it uh, using actions of uh, mapping class groups and their subgroups on certain combinatorially defined complexes and the, so the, the, this is a standard uh, approach in geometric group theory to start uh, to study a group uh, from the action of this group on certain complex and so we would like to come to such there is a rather um, not very small zoo of different complexes on which the mapping class groups act uh, there are plenty of such complexes uh, many of them have nice topological properties uh, well actually I would like to start with some philosophical uh, 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 speculations. Uh, okay. Well, first of all, uh, if just a group acts on the complex, but we can't say anything about this complex. Uh, about topological property of this complex, then this is useless. Uh, it is useful to when a group acts on a complex and we know something about the topology of this complex. The most, the nicest thing is if this complex is, can say, contractible. Okay, then it is very good. But okay, if we act uh, can act on a complex which is simply connected, this also can be useful and so on. Uh, on the other hand, of okay, any group acts on a point and it is it doesn't give us anything. So if a complex is too easy, then it doesn't give us uh, any information. Uh, the complex should uh, be uh, complicated enough to, to be useful. On the other hand, uh, if we any group acts, for instance, uh, on, on its scale tree uh, with respect to some set of generators, uh, or something like that. If we take uh, a complex which is very complicated, which uh, encloses all information about the group, then okay, it is just another language for the same property uh, for, for for the same problem. Mm, we do not decrease the complexity if the uh, uh, complex is as complicated as the group itself uh, and actually the most useful situation is when approximately one half of com of complexity of the group is 
on the complex. So say if some group acts on complex X, then we may ask of uh, how X is complicated. And uh, I say this is something philosophical, not, not purely mathematical. Uh, and how stabilizers of some vertices or simplices are complicated. If we take two, uh, if a complex is very easy, say we take a point, then okay, X is very easy and stabilizers are just very complicated as the initial group. And this doesn't give us anything. If we take such complex that it is very complicated and stabilizers are easy, say we find a complex on which a group acts freely uh, without any stabilizers, then okay, it, it, some, sometimes it is a convenient uh, mm, reinterpretation of the problem. Sometimes it, it is also can be useful. But usually it is not what we want. Yeah, usually it is very useful to, if we can divide the complexity between these two parts. If we may find such um, uh, complex that uh, complexity exists both here and here, and in both cases it is uh, easier than the group itself. Okay, this is some philosophy, and another, another mm, uh, philosophy is that, okay, if topological properties of a complex come from the mapping class group, if we use the properties of mapping class group, which we know to prove the uh, some topological property of the complex, then it may be not so uh, good. Uh, the most deep and the most uh, the best the, the best situation is when the some topological properties and say the contractibility of the complex comes from some deep uh, mm, uh, for, from some deep relationships. Say, say uh, uh, well, uh, below I will uh, show some examples, but say. Uh, sometimes there are examples when we can prove that some complex constructed uh, with action of mapping class group, that it is homotopy equivalent to the Teich-Müller space. And then we know that Teich-Müller space is contractible. This is a deep theorem and we take the contractibility of our complex from there. From there. And such relationships are very, mm, useful in, in, in this theory. Okay, but now, okay, some, now some examples. Uh, these are just some examples, uh, but uh, most uh, useful and maybe most uh, mm, famous, uh, there are many variants of these constructions and so on. Okay, maybe, the first, which I want to, to start with, is the curve complex. It is constructed as follows. So, our we would like to start with the following surface of some genus with punctures. Uh, at the moment, I, I don't want to study surface with. Uh, Mm, boundary components, let, 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 let us uh, just consider surface with punctures. So uh, I, I would like to remind that essential curve is uh, by def uh, definition, a simple closed curve on our, so on our surface. Uh, uh, that is homotopically non-trivial. And is not homotopic 
То я не ебу худого панча. So I would like to cons uh, we we have this surface. We have several punctures on them. I uh, I would like to consider uh, homotopic non-trivial uh, curves that do not. Uh, I don't want to consider curves like I have drawn uh, that just goes around a single puncture. So it, okay, we we may say take such curve or curve going around two punctures and so on. We have plenty of curves on our surface. And we consider, mm, well, in, in it, it is standard misuse of terminology that uh, sometimes curves are dismissed with uh, as a to isotopic class of curves. So I would like to consider I would like to be precise in the beginning. Uh, later, maybe I will uh, say some sometimes curves instead of isotopic class of curves. But uh, to, to start with, let us be precise. Consider isotopy classes. Isotopy or homotopy, we know that this is the same of uh, essential simple closed curves. And this is the set of vertices of our complex. So I would like, uh, the complex will be simplicial complex. So I just would like to point out which sets, which finite sets of vertices span simplices. So we have, uh, of course we have infinitely many isotopy classes of essential simple closed curves. Then some pairs uh, of vertices are connected by edges and so on. Well, <clears throat> so when, oh, when we spend an, uh, a simplex on some, if gamma zero, gamma k are isotopy classes of essential simple closed curves, then gamma zero, gamma k, uh, span a k simplex. I will denote this simplex by gamma zero, gamma k in square brackets. So they span a k simplex whenever gamma zero, gamma k, contain disjoint representatives. So whenever this, uh, this uh, simple cl closed curve, uh, curves can be made disjoint by an isotopy. Uh, note that uh, we have already proved that uh, mm, such collection of curves contain disjoint representatives whenever they are pair, they can be made pairwise. Uh, when a, a, if any pair of these curves uh, can be made made disjoint uh, by an isotopy, if they have just geometric intersect number zero, zero uh, for all G and M, then. Uh, these curves span a simplex. Uh, I just want uh, to recall that this is proved by uh, introducing a hyperbolic metric and then uh, just we take uh, geodesic representatives and if the geometric intersection numbers are pairwise geometric intersection numbers are zero, then geodesic representatives are disjoint, so, so okay. So for instance, uh, in fact, instead of isotopy classes of essential simple closed curves, we could from the very beginning say, 
that let us introduce a hyperbolic metric on our surface and we just take closed geodesics for vertices and we span a simplex by any set of pairwise disjoint closed geodesics. But uh, it is preferable to do to speak about isotropy classes of essential simple closed curves, since uh, it is useful to understand that, in fact, this construction is independent of the hyperbolic metric. Okay, we get such simplicial complex. It is uh, non compact, uh, it is some rather huge complex, so it is not so easy to understand how this complex behaves and and okay so we see that complex is enough complicated on the other hand the stabilizers are also rather complicated okay if we take say a stabilizer of a vertex then this means that we take a stabilizer of a simple closed curve on a surface this is, uh, we, we will discuss it later in more details, but this is something very similar to the mapping class group of a surface obtained by cutting the initial surface along our simple closed curve. We can cut our surface along a simple closed curve and we get a surface which is easier. It has, smaller genus or it has smaller number of uh, punctures and so on. So uh, um, we can proceed by induction. So uh, uh, complexes of such kind are useful from the point from this point of view. Okay, what do we know about this curve complex? First let us understand what is the dimension. Uh, well, it, this curve complex is denoted by C calligraphic of S, GN, and I, I will sometimes write CGN for C of SGN. Okay, first of all, what is the dimension of the curve complex of SGN? Okay, can we compute this? Let us start with dimension of a of a curve complex of the curve complex for a closed surface. What can we say about it? Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Uh -huh. Well. Uh, okay. We spend J probably well probably uh, J G um. no uh, no uh, look you need to compute the largest number uh, uh, the, 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 well the, the yeah the, the largest number of pairwise disjoint, disjoint maybe. Uh, simple closed curves. Uh, well, let us consider let us consider surface of genus two. Two G minus one, Why two G minus? Two G because uh, when we. Uh... If we cut along these uh, curves, and then uh, we have some. Ah, we will have. Wh wh why not G? <laughs> well, we, we, we just cut along these curves, and then we uh, try to uh, glue them uh, afterwards. Ah, yeah, there can be different. Uh, uh, how, how many curves are here? <laughs> uh, we, at least we have such vertex. 
Yes? Oh, no, not vertex uh, simplex. How many curves are here? Two, four, four, genus G. Three G minus two seems like this. No, three G minus three. Minus three, okay. Uh, look, if you cut, uh, this is Pan's decomposition. Uh, we can add new curves until we get uh, pairs of pans as uh, as uh, until all parts are pairs of pans. Uh, each pairs of each pair of pans has Euler characteristic minus one. So when we glue them all together, then there are two G minus two pairs of pans. The G minus two is correct uh, value, but not for the number of components of a curve, but for the number of components of the complement. But okay, each pair of pants has three boundary components and each boundary components lies in two pairs of pants. So, so the number of uh, components is three G minus three and the dimension of the complex is three G minus four. Uh, well, of course, dimension of a simplex is one less than the number of vertices. Well, and this works for any Pan's decomposition. So any maximal collection of simple closed curves consists of three G minus three simple closed curves. Uh, okay. Is the Schrodinger наверное один, а не Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Tor, 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 torus is uh, mm, is a special situation, and uh, actually, actually, mm, uh, I would like uh, yes. Uh, a good restriction here is that uh, we would like always to assume that 3G plus number of punctures is greater than or equal to five. Uh, why so strange restriction? Actually, mm -hmm. uh, I, we, we will prove it later, but now I just would like to announce that this is exactly the uh, the um, <clears throat> condition under which this uh, complex is connected. For, for a torus, uh, it is not connected. Uh, no, to we have just disjoint number of uh, vertices and it is not interesting. So it is interesting to, uh, to consider curve complex under this restriction. And in this situation, it is always connected. And yes, I, when I speak about dimension and so on, I always assume that this restriction is, is here. Mm, well, another, and also, also the dimension uh, of this uh, complex is 3G minus four. And this complex is so-called pure complex. Uh, this means that uh, all, uh, uh, homogeneous in sense of dimension. This means that, uh, okay, we, we do not have situations like that, that uh, it, uh, a complex is one dimensional in some its part and two dimensional in another its part. Here, uh, any simplex, is uh, contained in a um, 3G minus four dimensional simplex. So any simplex is contained in a simplex of maximal dimension. So we have such complex. Of course, of course, the mapping class group, mapping class group, acts on, uh, 
Yes, uh, it acts on this complex. Uh, mapping class group takes any simple closed curve to another essential simple closed curve. And of course, mapping any mapping class takes disjoint simple closed curves to disjoint simple closed curves. So we have, it does act by, by okay, actually by isomorphism, not only by continuous mapping, but they are actually isomorphisms of simpli simplicial isomorphisms. Uh, oh. Yes, uh, good exercise. Uh, compute the dimension of uh, curve complex uh, in case of surface with boundary or oh, with uh, with uh, with punctures. Uh, well, uh, it, it it is computed in the same way. You just uh, no difficulty here. Okay. And actually, this complex was appeared in the work of Harre in 1986. And actually, Harre proved uh, the following that, uh, okay, provided that, uh, so, well, so, suppose that uh, this dimension restriction. Uh, Holds. Uh, the, the, then the complex is uh, connected, and actually, it turns out that it is always <clears throat> a, uh, we, we can always uh, uh, in uh, under this. Uh, restrictions, we can always uh, say what is the homotopy type of the complex. So, and surprisingly, this complex is always homotopy equivalent to a wedge of spheres. And a precise answer is as follows. If we take a closed surface of genus G, then the complex is homotopy equivalent to wedge of infinitely many spheres of dimension 2g minus 2. Uh, this uh, this is a way just uh, I use this notation for a wedge of infinitely many spheres uh, of dimension 2g minus 2. So we see such situation that the geometric dimension of this complex is 3g minus 4, but from homotopical point of view, the homotopy uh, uh, the homotopy uh, dimension is 2g minus 2. Actually, the com this, com this complex contains a deformation retract of dimension 2g minus 2. But this deformation retract is much less convenient to work with. And it is not a sub, a sub complex. So mm, it is more convenient to work with the original uh, complex of curves, but uh, uh, we always keep in mind that uh, the, 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 topologically it is just wage of this sphere. The most important in this case, in, in this situation, is that when G is uh, large, then these complex is highly connected. It is always useful when, the, I, I have already said that the best situation is when a group acts on a contractible complex, but it is all, always, uh, convenient if the complex is highly connected. Well, and uh, I, the, uh, I continue to formulate the result. This is true, okay, for G greater than zero. Actually, G uh, 
g equals one is also allowed here, uh, but not but not interesting. Uh, But if we have at least one puncture, then the answer is also the age of spheres, but of dimension to G plus N minus three, if G greater than zero and N equals uh, greater than zero. Uh, note that uh, if, we, if we try to put N equals zero here, we get a non-correct answer for. So there is such a shift by one in the case of connected sphere or of connected surface. And uh, also we, an important situation is genus G with N punctures. And here we have wedge of N minus four dimensional spheres. And again, if we try uh, to naively put G equals zero here, then we get a non-correct answer. Correct answer is N minus four dimensional spheres. Okay. This is a nice result by Harry. And next time we will prove this. Uh, this is not so hard. Uh, but now let us come to another complex. I would like uh, first uh, to, to show you several useful complexes and only then come to some particular properties of them. Since it is better to look on them altogether, no, not maybe altogether, but uh, uh, to understand some similarities between them. A, a complex which is very uh, similar to curve complex is called arc complex. Uh, <clears throat> Suppose that we have surface of genus G with N punctures and suppose that N is strictly greater than zero. This complex can be defined only if we have at least one puncture. Then instead of, uh, it is at the moment, it is more convenient to me interpret these points as marked points, not punctures. Okay. and. What I want now, I would like, I have surface with punctures and I would like to consider essential arcs. Uh, I, I, I consider arcs with endpoints in marked points, it is allowed that arc has uh, different endpoints. It is allowed that arc has the same endpoints. Uh, the only thing it is, uh, which is not allowed, uh, so essential arc is an arc which is not homotop, not homotopic to a neighborhood of a puncture. Well, so an arc between with different uh, endpoints is always essential, but an arc uh, with coincided endpoints, okay, th this one is not essential. It is homotopically trivial. It, it, it can be homotop to a neighborhood of a puncture. And say this one, this one, okay, it is essential. It goes around in another puncture. Okay. And completely the same. For such acts, we still have. Uh, all the same results that if arcs are pairwise non-intersecting, then they can be made non-intersecting altogether. If, if they are up to isotopy non-intersecting, pairwise non-intersecting, they can be made non-intersecting altogether. Uh, and 
if some set of arcs can be made non non uh, can be made disjoint, then this can be done uniquely up to isotopy and so on. So all the same picture and arc complex. is defined completely in the same spirit. So vertices are uh, isotopy classes of essential arcs. And uh, arcs alpha zero, alpha k span a k simplex if and only if uh, alpha zero, alpha k uh, can be made disjoint by an isotopy. Have isotopic representatives, it's better to say, uh, by isotopy, uh, and which is equivalent, they have pairwise zero intersection numbers. Oh, when I say about, uh, intersection numbers or disjoint, I always mean that, uh, uh, okay, it is allowed to have same endpoints. All arcs are considered, uh, mm, uh, so th this, this is disjoint arcs. Uh, disjoint means no interior endpoints. Uh, actually, the, correct intuition here is that we would like to think of them as marked points to draw arcs and then to replace marked point, points with punctures and uh, to say that, uh, okay, we still uh, would like to, uh, to not to consider these points as points. And actually maybe, maybe punctures is some, sometimes even more convenient since then, uh, these arcs can be represented by, again, by geodesics, which asymptotically go to this puncture and to that puncture at their ends. And again, all, all uh, arguments uh, can, with hyperbolic metrics and geodesics work here as well. Okay, and from homotopy point of view, R complex is even more ni even nicer than curve complex. Namely, there is the following theorem. This R complex is contractible. Contractible. Uh, uh, let us add whenever non-empty. For sphere with small numbers of arcs uh, of point uh, of points, it is empty. But uh, uh, if it is non empty, then it is always contractible. Uh, there are several proofs here, uh, and again, uh, next time uh, I will tell you one of them. Uh, and good exercise is uh, to compute the dimension of the arc complex. Again, we you just need to uh, study how these arcs decompose uh, our surface and, and uh, the, 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 then you're done. Okay, and maybe Another very nice complex, which was important historically, uh, and actually, mm, which also have very deep origins. Uh, uh, maybe it is not so often used now. The matter is that here only, this complex is only two dimensional. It is not, its dimension is not something like G, 3G minus three and so on. Uh, it is Hatcher-Thurston complex. Uh, 
and also it is called uh, the cut systems complex. Uh, uh, let us consider a closed surface. In, in this situation, it is better to start with a closed surface. And uh, let us introduce the following terminology. Cut system. Uh, oh, sorry. Cut system is a collection of G pairwise disjoint simple closed curves, gamma one, gamma G, such that if we remove them from our genus G surface, then we get a sphere with two G punctures. So look, G is the maximal number of curves that can be removed uh, so that the complement is still connected. Well, say here when genus is four, we can remove four curves so that the complement is connected. Actually, it is equivalent, it is equivalent. Uh, th this condition is equivalent to the condition that homology classes of these curves are form, uh, are linearly independent. The matter is that if homology classes are linearly dependent, then uh, some combination of them always bounds a subsurface. So we always have several uh, components. Uh, on the other, so the, it, it is good exercise to understand that this is indeed if and only if. So this is. Uh, here we have an example of cut system. Uh, four curves and the complement is, uh, is um, uh, has genus zero. Again, well, now vertices of hatcher torsen, torsen complex, let it be HT of SG. Uh, vertices of this complex as are isotopy classes of cut systems. So look, uh, any cut system is a G minus one dimensional simplex of the curve complex. But now these they are interpreted as vertices, not, not as simplices. But now look, if you there are easy, there are easy uh, moves that uh, change cut system. We may take one of the curves, say gamma two then you may find another simple closed curve that has unique intersection points with this gamma and has no and is disjoint from all other gammas suppose that we have this gamma prime gamma 2 prime any time we have situation like that we have two cut systems gamma 1 gamma g and well, in, the, in this situation, uh, gamma one, gamma two prime, gamma G. So we may replace this uh, with another one. And 
Yes, uh, I, let us uh, specify that when we say about cut system, uh, we we do not want to think about uh, order of these components. Cut systems uh, just without ordering of ordering of components. So, 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 so uh, we, uh, uh, it is completely not, not important in which order this. And anytime we see this situation, we connect these two, uh, we connect these uh, two uh, vertices by an edge. And now there are three types of, um, I'm sorry, I am out of time. I just, just, just I need th three minutes. Three types of two simplices. Uh, first of all, sometimes we have situation like that. We have three curves. Uh, let it be gamma one here for, for simplicity and with this one. Uh, three curves, gamma one, gamma one prime, gamma one two prime, which are uh, disjoint from all other gammas. Gamma two, gamma G. Then we have three cut systems. We may take gamma one, gamma two, gamma G, we may take gamma one prime, gamma two, gamma G, and we may take gamma one two prime, gamma two, gamma G. And this is a, a, a triangle. Here we add a triangle. I'm, I'm sorry, not of two simplices, but of two cells. This, this complex is not simplicial. Here we have triangular faces and here are them. We have also quadrangular faces and we have pentagonal faces. Uh, the, these correspond to the following pictures. We have, sometimes we have two possibilities for gamma one and two possibilities for gamma two. And all they are disjoint from each other. Yes, uh, in, all, in all these pictures, it is important that uh, here, all these intersection indices uh, numbers are exactly one and uh, for all other pairs here too. Uh, suppose that here we have intersection numbers one and they are disjoint from all other. Uh, uh, curves. Then we have gamma one, gamma two, and all other are the same. Here we have gamma one prime, gamma two. Here we have gamma one prime, gamma two prime, and all others. And here we have gamma one, gamma two prime, and so on. And here we, uh, we add uh, for um, uh, quadrangular face. And pentagonal faces correspond to uh, such wonderful picture. I'll try to write it down. And we finish on at this moment. <laughs> Suppose that we have found five curves, gamma one, gamma one prime, gamma one three prime, gamma one four prime, and gamma one five prime. And which are also disjoint from, no, no it, it, it is very uh, nasty notation. Uh, Let us denote them 
so we up, we find five terms c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 so that consecutive of them are have a unique intersection points and non-consecutive are disjoint then we never can find the maximum we can find uh, G minus two curves that are disjoint from each other and from this one, from each other and from C1, C5. And then I can form five uh, cut systems. I cannot take C1 and C2 in the same cut system, but I can take C1, C3 and these gums. And also I can take C1, C4 and gums. Also I can take C2, C4 C to C5 in gammas and C1, no, C, C3, C5 in gammas. And here we add this five gonal phase and all together, all these phases and so on, we get this Hatcher Thurston complex, which is two dimensional and the main thing about this complex is that this hatcher torsten complex is simply connected. And the, this is uh, its topological property, which is uh, used for study of uh, the mapping plot group. Well, thank you very much for attention. I'm sorry for being late today. And I think it's time to finish now. Uh, sorry, may I ask a few technical questions? Yeah, of course. So, uh, did the uh, recording of the previous lecture exist? Is is it exist? The recording of the previous lecture is on the same uh, website as all all previous lecture that were uh, ah, on YouTube. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, uh, Simon said to me that it is on the on the same. Uh, to the same place okay i didn't find it but maybe okay. uh, just uh, i also don't know maybe you ask simon he, he, he okay. definitely knows it, it it exists on the mathematics at hsc channel okay but i i don't see it 